Hi guys and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included Let's Play. My name is Luma and today we're going to pick off where we left off last time. First off we're going to clean up the mess that we left last time. Maybe we are going to start up the Paco farm and because the Paco will gobble up all of our algae, I think it's a good idea that we also build an electrolyzer setup. In addition to that, maybe we have enough time to build up a stone hatchling ranch setup. Future me here, we did get to a lot of ranching, but we did not build the electrolyzer. Our poor Paco seem to be overcrowded, that's because this is a space for 4 animals and the eggs count 2. So we are going to take the fry egg and put it somewhere else, preferably in our future Paco ranch. For now I'm planning on dropping the Paco eggs right here. The most important thing right now is to put the Paco egg in the storage bin before it hatches. So quickly get the Paco egg, drop it in there and then fill it with water. Quickly, let me explain why I built this. Each Paco will lay one egg in their lifetime if they are not confined. It doesn't matter if they are cramped as long as they are not confined. So they will lay one egg, die, leave some Paco filet and we can eat the Paco filet and another Paco will be hatching from the egg that is laid. What we are doing right here is the manual version of the Paco farm. Because we don't have access to the drop shoots right now, that's the version we are going with. The Pacos that we got right here will lay some eggs. We are going to collect the eggs, put them in our Paco farm, in the top part of our base. In case all the Paco in our breeding pool will die of old age, we will take eggs from the top of our base and replace the died of Paco with new eggs. Hey, we got a care package. There's some brine in it. Maybe that is useful for the future. Now that we got all the fry eggs in our storage bin, we can release them and wait until they hatch so we can get some juicy Paco filet in the future. Also, we could deconstruct this, but I'm guessing we're getting some more Paco fry eggs in the future. I was wondering why my dupes have popped eardrums as you can see down here. That's because they went into the highly pressured polluted oxygen area of the base and then their ears just popped. Do you see our stone hatchling egg? I want to build a stable for the stone hatchlings that will hatch from that. But I want to put it here because we need a 5 tile wide room and I want it to be as big as possible so it needs to be 96 tiles high and as you can see it would go right into this slime and polluted oxygen area. So we need to clean this up first before we can build our stables. As you can see our liquid pump is still working heavily and putting all the polluted liquid into our infinite storage. Right now we're at 4600 kilograms or 5500 kilograms a tile. I'm going to deactivate the Paco filet for now so we can see how much Paco filet we get. To get rid of all this mess up here I'm going to build a one tile storage right here but just an easy version for the beginning. For now I'm setting this to sweep only and all. So everything that I'm marking as sweep command will be dropped here. Now I'm going to deactivate everything that we don't want in here like critter eggs, some of the organics like the polluted dirt and the slime and every liquefiable but I guess we don't have liquefiable choosable right now. The next reasonable thing for the one tile storage to do is put in some water because the water prevents everything that is in there from off gassing. Now we can deconstruct the bottle emptier and place another automatic dispenser on the left side. After that we can just copy over the settings from our already existing automatic dispenser. Guys, have you seen this? The settings from the automatic dispensers have transferred to the storage bin. I did not know that this could happen. So I'm going to revoke this and just set it to the critter X again with the sweep only command. If I, if I find it. This will be the base for our stone hatchling ranch. We will not building it horizontally, but vertically. The base has already been built, so we're going to fill it in with everything that we need for our hatch farm. Hey guys, as you can see, I put everything that we need for a perfect stable right in here. A grooming station, a critter drop off and two critter feeder. Why did I put in two critter feeder? Because they only store 2000 kg of critter food. And our duplicants would need to run 
back and forth a lot of time to refill every single critter feeder. Now that we have two, they have to run only half of the time, which saves on some time. The second reason why I made this room five tiles wide and not four tiles is because if we want a maximum size stable, it can be 69 tiles. And if you want a 69 tile room with only four tiles wide, we would need to go up to our cool steam wind. And we don't want that. There's the sound for more blueprints. More brine it is. We got five more skill points to allocate. We got Harold who doesn't get a skill point because he is so happy right now and he has everything he would ever need. We got Joshua who is going to be our mechatronic engineer so he's going to get the improved tinkering. Mary is one of our two designated builders as well as Abe so she's going to get the improved construction trade. Mima, Mima is our critter ranger and designer. So I think it's a good idea to put her in design, but since we don't build anything right now, we can skip on that for the future. Trovaldo? I have no clue what Trovaldo does, so I'm going to take a look at that. Trovaldo's reason for existing is cooking and researching. So we are either putting him in research or cooking. So back to the skill allocation. Trovaldo is going to get some more of this researching traits. I think we are putting him in astronomy because we already got an atomic researcher. I want this stable filled with stone hatchlings. So I'm going to set this critter to Oh, I can't set it to stone hatchlings because we haven't unlocked them yet because there isn't any stone hatchling in the base that's already hatched. So the priority for now is hatching a stone hatchling. Therefore, we will need a incubator and for the incubator we will need more refined metals. So I'm going to our rock crusher and going to crush some copper ore to copper. As you can see right now, I'm building the incubator as well as a cycle sensor and a cable that connects them so I can set them to stone hatchlings and incubate them continuously. Now I just need some power and it should work fine. Now that everything has been built, I'm going to set the priority to nine so that the first thing our ranger will do is go there and hug our egg so it gets the bonus and will hatch faster. Therefore, I'm going to set the cycle sensor to active duration of 10% and active time of 10% so it doesn't run the whole time and we save on some energy. Here you can see our emergency system kicking in. As you can see our batteries are way too low so Ape and Bird had to run on the manual generator to get them back up again. I guess it's time to build a second coal generator so our smart battery gets filled faster. The second coal generator has been built so we're going to add the automatic wire to that one too. Also set the priority to 8 as well and the priority of the cable building. Come on. I'm going to expand our ladder system upwards and I'm going to build it out of granite because there's some granite on the floor so they don't have to run and get the sandstone to build these ladder tiles. Why I'm building ladder is because I want this polluted water down here and sucked up to our infinite storage. Also it's time to clean this mess up and use this room for our stables. To speed up the process I put in a second incubator and as you can see the cycle sensor is set to 20% so it starts when the first ends. The effect of Nima coming by and hugging the eggs can be seen if you check out the lullaby trade. This stone hatchling egg for example has an incubation rate of plus 400% and this stone hatchling egg does not. Got another care package. Maybe we take the shine nymph eggs and build a lamp out of it or something like that. I'm going to place the shine nymph eggs in the storage bin that I placed right here so that our bristle blossom get more light. We finally got rid of all the polluted water. We sucked it up with our pump and stored it in the infinite storage. Now we have some space to build for our critter ranch. As you can see I expanded it already a little bit but there's a lot of polluted oxygen with slime lung up there. So I'm going to place deodorizers there until they cleaned it up to clean oxygen and then we're going to expand further. Some more brine for the base and some skills for bird and ape. Because I also want to expand the base downwards, I put a pump here to get rid of all this pesky polluted water and to prevent the base from being filled with polluted oxygen, I placed two more deodorizers here and locked them off by a manual airlock. 
I connected the pump to our already existing system with our liquid shutoff and our filter, so it gets stored in the infinite storage. To the left of the base, we can expand our power shed, get rid of the polluted water, and then we can make our base insulation upwards bigger and dig out all of this slime, algae, and some of the aluminum ore. We have our first stone hatchling, so we can transport him to the stable. In the stable, I set critter to stone hatchling and the food that the stone hatchling gets, as well as when he is in his adult form, he, he will be a regular stone hatch. He will eat igneous rock. Stone hatchling, igneous rock too. And then we copy the setting over and set this critter drop off to all critters, but the auto wrangle surplus to zero critters. That means when there's even a single critter, it gets auto wrangled and put to the next drop off with a higher priority. I set Mima's priority away from farming and towards the ranching skill. All of the Pakus have died of old age. We just have one fry egg left. But don't forget about our Paku up here. They are glum and overcrowded, but they will still lay one egg in their lifetime. So we have a couple of eggs here. We are using these eggs to repopulate our breeder cell. Even more shine nymph eggs. Let's repopulate our Paku breeder. I put a storage bin in there and now we are going to fry egg. Set it to 3 kilograms and I hope that I take 3 eggs and putting them in there. Everything worked as intended. We now have 3 eggs from the Pakus and can deconstruct our storage bin again. That should repopulate our Paco breeder. If we are lucky, these Paco are already tamed. If not, we need 10 more cycles and a lot of algae to tame them again and they will lay more eggs for our one tile Paco farm up here. As you can see, I made a bigger recording jump here because all I had to do was remove the polluted oxygen and polluted water, dig up some tiles, we have a lot of material now, as well as some space for more contraptions, and I swept up a lot of these materials that are lying around. Here you can see Mima doing her work in hugging the eggs. We got three of these stone hatchlings now, as well as more eggs from our farm down here, and our fish farm is filled to the brim. For the next care package, we got two more duplicates and two more seeds. It is about time to take in another duplicate, but I don't like the duplicates that we have right here, so I think I'm going to take the balm lily seeds. We have a small pocket with more polluted oxygen and polluted water down here, so I placed a pitcher pump on top of it and set the bottle emptier to enable auto bottling. So the duplicates will get the polluted water, dump it here, it will get sucked up, placed in our storage tank and end up in our purification room sooner or later. Now that we have the space, I want to build another great hall and a kitchen to the left of it. This will be the layout of the new great hall. I'm not sure about the kitchen yet, that's why I left this empty for now. The new great hall has been built. I disabled the water cooler so the duplicates don't waste any water and now we're going to fill our flower pots with some more of these briar seeds and one body bot seed and whatever we have left. Our shine nymph room looks amazing by the way and look at the decor overlay. We got more care packages and as you can see this time we got an interesting dupe in Turner. Turner has three different traits that he is good in and three different interests. He's a pacifist so he can't attack but that doesn't matter. So Turner, welcome to the base. For the beginning Turner will be our farmer so he can tend to all of our mealwood. We need another cord for Turner so I'm going to deconstruct these tiles, dig up those two and place a cord right here. For now this doesn't look very good but I'm, I will think of something. I placed the park sign to the right. I rearranged the door from up here to down here so the duplicates can jump these two tiles high gap and we have our bedroom back. As you can see, I've decided on a design for the kitchen. This will be our one tile storage. We fill it with some chlorine and for the future, we're going to put our food in there. I'm going to place another tile up there after I place the conveyor drop off right there. This will be the place where we drop all the eggs, the critters will hatch, they will die or we will take the eggs out, make some omelette out of it or we will put it in our incubators, which I will be putting down here. The problem right now is, as you can see, we don't have the drop off here, so we have to research it. And as I already seen, the drop off needs some special kind of research, which uh, seems to be from the DLC, so I don't know where we can get this. Ah, I found the symbol. So we need to research the crash plan first, so we got the capability for orbital research, which seems like a lot of work for a tiny piece of equipment. 
but well, it has to be done. As you can see, our base has been heating up quite a bit from the transformers and from the coal generators, as well as um, from outside heat. So it could be a good idea to start the cooling sooner than later because our mealwood will only grow until 30 degrees Celsius. And right now it is 26.7 degrees. For the cooling, we will need some plastic. And because I think there is no crude oil except these tiny little pockets here in the DLC on the starting planet, we will need to hatch some dracos, feed them mealwood and keep them in a hydrogen atmosphere so they become glossy dracos. Glossy dracos can be harvested for plastic. Because Joshua will be our mechatronic engineer, I gave him the operating skill for the electrical engineering. Right next to our existing farm, I built a prototype for our draco farm. This hopefully helps us convert them to glossy dracos, so we can shear them and get some plastic. I had to stop the game right here because our dupes seem to be hungry even though we have 28,000 calories. That's because I did not permit them to eat the meat or the pagophile. So we have to go to our consumables and allow them the good food for, for now. I guess I'm going to cook up the meat before I'm going to serve it. Yeah, that's a better idea because the barbecue will give plus 8 morale and the meat will give minus 1. Here you can see Trovaldo cooking up all this beautiful barbecue and I also allowed the cooked fish and we got 16 kilograms of eggs, so why not cook them too? It is already time for a new care package and because I'm using up a lot of copper ore, I'm thinking of replenishing it. The farm area is done, so we just have to catch a Draco and put it in there, as well as a lot of hydrogen for the top layer. Because only when the Dracos are in hydrogen, they will grow back their scales. Here we have a wild Draco. Let's see if we can catch it, wrangle it up and put it in our farm. <laughs> Look how unhappy he is. <laughs> In order to get some hydrogen for our Draco farm, I'm going to build this spaghetti pipe for our gas. Here is the hydrogen. I'm going to put a gas pipe right there and the duplicants after they finally build our ladder tiles will suck up the hydrogen, transport it all over the base and release it in our Draculet farm. The reason why I chose the hydrogen up there is because it is reasonably hot, 36 degrees. But the hydrogen down here has 40 degrees and the hydrogen here is at almost 60 degrees. I replaced the mesh door next to Turner's bed with a mechanical door so that the light can't go through and he sleeps better. Another very important thing that I forgot to do was this allow to harvest those plants. Because I said this allow because the Dracos will eat the uh, mealwoods only in their plant form, not when they drop down on the floor. So these duplicants harvesting them is not helpful right now. Please go away bird and Turner go away too. For the next blueprint we got water, muckroot, Max and Gossman. Max is a pilot which could come in handy but he is a slow learner. We got Gossman. Gossman is great at excavating, also buff. The water could be cool so we could use it for cooling, maybe, we don't know. And the muckroot is just 4800 calories but we got 68000 as you can see up there. So I'm thinking of taking the water. We have so much stone hatchlings now and stone hatches and eggs that we need to start start up a second farm. The moment of truth for the transport of the hydrogen to our Draco farm has come. So activate it and let's see how this goes. Nothing happens. Ah. I had another safety measure in place so I wouldn't flood my base with the hydrogen. So I'm connecting this right now and let's try this again. The oxygen pressure in the upper parts of our base is quite low. So I placed another of these oxygen diffusers right here. We only have 16,000 kilograms of algae left, but we have access to a lot of algae here in the floor tiles, as well as down in our base combined with the slime. We are in dire need of more Draco to increase our chance of glossy Draco eggs. Our existing Draco only has a chance of 16% here on the down right to lay a glossy Draco egg. How about we enjoy this beautiful moment between Mima and her Draco? The statistic wasn't on our side, as you can see we got a regular draglet egg, not a glossy draco egg. Bird is digging the way to the next dracos that we will be catching. It is already grown up and has the chance to lay us some glossy draco egg. Since the amount of our critters increased drastically, I'm going to place more incubators down here 
with more of the cycle sensors and I deconstructed the ones up here. Now that the incubators have been built, I set the cycle sensors to not overlapping times. 10% and 10% here, 20 and 10 here, 30 and 10 here, 40 and 10 here. Also, the critter drop-off set to order angle surplus, zero critters, all critters allowed. As soon as a critter appears down here, it gets wrangled and put in one of our ranges. Now we just have to set the eggs. Two for the stone hatchlings to replenish and two more for our draglets. In case you were wondering, this is our room layout right now. A great hall and a kitchen here, our nature reserve spanning all over the place, a recreation room, the second great hall which we're going to rip out when we want, the barracks, washrooms, more stables and more nature reserves to the right and downwards. I quickly expanded the base downwards and our power shaft so we have more space for the future electrolyzer setup which I'm going to put in right here. I'm not sure if I can get this done in this episode, I think not, but at least we will have the space dug out for that. All of our dupes need to be better at carrying stuff, except for Turner. Turner is going to be our crop tender. Trovaldo, how good are you at carrying stuff? You could be better. Mima, more carrying for you. Mary, Mary is okay. Joshua, mechatronics engineer. Harold, Harold, I'm going to take a second look at you later. Bert, more carrying for you. And Abe, same thing. As you can see, we dug down way past our infinite storages, right through the slime and the yucky lung stuff, the polluted oxygen. And now we have this space here available for a stackable design of a electrolyzer plus spawn. Or maybe I'm using my other design, I'm not sure about that yet. And with that being finished, it is already time for the recap. So let's check what we did today. We collected a lot of fry eggs from our Paco breeder, some off screen, and placed them in our Paco farm, the one tile storage up here. We managed to build two vertically stone hatch ranches. And next to that is the area where we tried to produce a glossy Draco egg. We built a total of four incubators, each incubator set on its own cycle sensor so that don't waste too much power. The space down here is the future critter drowner and this is our food storage. We also designed the second great hall. The power shaft got expanded upwards and downwards and next to it we dug up a lot of room so we have space for future buildings and contraptions. To see the base from a different perspective we can take a look at different overlays. For example power, temperature, the gas overlay, illumination, liquid and gas piping, our decor level, the pesky germs, the never used harvesting overlay and our rooms that we built. For all the people that reached to this point, thank you very much. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys and Luma out.